The next pattern in the organizing data series is the opposite of the last one. That was called change value to reference, and this is change reference to value. The motivation here is that you have this reference object, which is small and immutable, and essentially holds a very simple value, but throughout the domain, throughout the rest of the code, it is a reference object, and it's getting difficult to manage as that. So we take a look at something here. We have this currency class, which just has a string to name it. Now a currency class might have some other attributes to it as well, of course, maybe some conversion rate math and things like that. But for now, this just has the name. We have this private constructor, which we use in this factory method. Now, if it was a reference object, this factory method would probably be getting it from somewhere else. In our last example, we had a static hash table. Uh, we might be getting it from a database. Maybe we have a lookup table of currencies. But even that lookup table is never really going to change, at least very rarely. And if two objects throughout the system have the same currency name, but aren't technically the same point in memory, does that really matter? It might not, and it might, get the, it might make the code a little difficult to manage. So what we're going to do here is change this from a reference type back to a value type. So the first thing we'll do is make the constructor public, and then we would get rid of the factory method, and of course we'd have to update any call and code. Now the, the compiler would tell us at this point all the places where that factory method was used, and we could replace all of those with the use of the constructor instead. Of course this isn't still the end of it just yet. Let's say we have this other class that's using this, Uh, let's call this a bool instead. And we're going to say turn new currency of US dollars equals new currency of US dollars. Now if this was a value type at this point, then these two currencies should be equal. They have the same value. But we're still technically a reference type. Well, the compiler is going to keep us as a reference type for a while, but the point being not so much what the compiler is interpreting us as, whether we're on the stack or the heap, but logically, if two instances with the same value are the same thing, then they really are in this case. And so, just like we did in a previous pattern, we need to override two very specific methods. This is going to be return name dot equals, and this should be a currency. You could throw in some additional error checking here, make sure what you got in was a instance of currency, no big deal. For now we're just going to assume it. And then we also have to override get hash code, which is very simple. We only have one field, so we would get the hash code of that. Now if we had multiple fields, we might use a logical operator here. Let's say we had another field. Let's say we had something like some other value. Didn't matter what. Then we would use an operator there to get a complete hash code of those. But since we only have one field, it's very simple. And now, this should in fact return true. One currency of US dollars is the same thing as another currency of US dollars. And that's pretty much it for the change reference to value pattern. Thanks for watching.